Hello, good morning. So I just wanted to share with you, um, before I start sharing, I just wanted to do a meditation. And this is one that uh, Rosanna inspired, a lady that I have just met from Utah, and she's awesome. Anyway, so just take some deep breaths. Some deep belly breaths. Why, while you're doing this, imagine all of the negative, stressful, pulling energy, dark, any dark energy, any stressful energy, any hopeless energy. Uh, and just go ahead and breathe all of that out and then breathe in light and goodness and all of those awesome things. Now I want you to see that you are standing in this beautiful heavenly room and surrounding you are these heavenly mirrors that reflect exactly to each cell of your body. They reflect your divine self. So your, these mirrors reflect your liver, your divine godly blueprint of a liver and for your kidneys that divine origin and to every part of your body your physical fitness every part of your body uh your to your brain to your teeth everything and i want you to just stand in this room and see your beauty and your greatness and see the wholeness of your body and just take a few minutes and look in these mirrors and see your wholeness and your highest self. And now as you look in the mirror again, you look back to see your own reflection, your face, and on the top of your head is a beautiful crown. That, is a, that signifies your innate godliness, your divinity. Your beauty, your wholeness, your light and take just another moment and really just soak in your own beautiful light that your divinity and your greatness mm. So what I wanted to go over today was safety. How I want you to think about how safe you feel in God's presence, in your heavenly father, your heavenly mother's presence, in Christ, your savior's presence, and how regardless of where you are in your life, that they always see your greatness and they always see your potential and your talents and the talents that you could easily develop 
and the things that you could grow into. They see all of those things, including your weaknesses, and they see your they, they see your divinity, they see your beauty, they see all of the wholeness and the greatness within you. And I want you to, in that place, feel how safe you feel. That is what God intended for you to feel every single day. As you connect with him, the reason why he put us in families is to teach us our divine attachments. So he put us in families so that we, because we instinctively attach, just like, you know, you hear those stories of those animals that are born and they didn't have a mother anywhere. And so they attached to the first thing that they saw. And we, it might not be exactly the same for us, but it's pretty close. And we have those attachment those attach attachment tendencies. And when we are living in our wholeness and greatness, our as parents or your parents, as they were living at, as they lived in their wholeness and their greatness, they parented you that's in that same way that our heavenly father and heavenly mother parent us with seeing our greatness and our divinity. And when we're throwing a tantrum or whatever, like a two-year-old, <laughs> they see you know, that you're just in that this growing stage and they love you for where you are. They love you and they know that you have greatness within you. And you, you know that you're safe. And so you're able to grow and develop and get past that. And it's, and so, okay. Two years ago, maybe, no, maybe it's four. I don't even know. I was watching a YouTube video on attachment by Gordon Newfeld, And I, because I was going through the starting uh, libraries of hope has this take five, which is a star, an introductory course to the well-educated art, uh, Marlene Peterson's stuff, which is beautiful and awesome. And he talked about how we are, we are designed to attach. And when we, uh, when our parents are busy or they're going through their own traumatic experiences or whatever happens in their life, they're not there for us, for us to attach to we. And so then we attach to our peers and that peer attachment create, that's why you've seen such a decline in vocabulary and literature and all of those things because of our peer culture and our peer orientation but the problem with that is there's so many things. And as I've been reading his book, uh, Gordon Newfeld's book, Hold On To Your Kids, I see so many parallels between scripture and, and the breakdown that he talks about that happens when we do not follow these divinely, these divinely sanctioned and patterned things like family. And... <clears throat> He talks about all of these different things that can happen and life happens. And so I'm not in any way judging you because I have so much where I have failed. And the beauty of this whole message is that regardless of where you are, Jesus Christ is still your savior. And he's still just like, okay. And we've been in Sunday school, we've been studying uh, about Joseph of Egypt and how what anyone, including Satan, intends for your destruction, when we turn to Christ and we keep our focus on him, what he intends for our downfall can be for our greatest good. And even uh, Joseph's father, Jacob, or Israel, um, as he was traveling to, to find a wife uh, in Genesis, I think it's, yeah, Genesis 28, verse 16, he's traveling there and he's in this desolate place. And it says that Jacob, he went on a, he went to sleep on a stone of pillows or a pillow of stones. And Jacob awakened out of his sleep and he said, surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not because he had, he had this amazing dream. And so wherever you are in your life, the Lord is in that place. 
and he is there waiting for you to be open to receive his love and his comfort and his blessings. I know that Jesus Christ made all of these things possible for us to heal through his atonement. And as, as we, okay, so our parents, we're designed to, I'm sorry, let me get back on track. So we're designed to attach to our parents. And in God's correct design, then our parents teach us to attach to God. Because God, even more so than our parents, is safe, right? He, he always loves us. He always understands where we're coming from, even when no one else does. Even when sometimes when we ourselves don't understand where we're coming from and why we're doing what we're doing, he understands. And so we can go to him. And he is a safe place. And so when we teach our children that first attach to attach to us, and then we teach them to attach to God, then they have, then obviously when we're in our correct nature, when in our, when we are in our true form and our true nature, we are a safe place. But even when we aren't, when we teach our children to attach to God, he is their safe place. And that you look at Joseph and his father taught him uh, his father taught him to attach, to go to, to turn to the Lord. And so in all of his trials, he continually turned to the Lord. And so the Lord was able to take those things and create the most beautiful story where he was a savior for his people. And he was able, he was able to save not only his own people, but all of the people in Egypt and all around because, because of the seven years of plenty that they had stored and they were prepared for the seven years of drought. And so we can teach our children to, have, to go to, just as Joseph of Egypt, we can teach them to turn to Christ in their trials and to trust him and trust that in all of what they're doing, they will be able to come out successful. And I know that as we learn, as we, as we, give our children and pray for healing so that we can give our children space or our nieces and nephews or whoever is in your life, your grandchildren, whatever the case is, whatever the circumstances of your life, that we can be that safe place, that we can go to him so that we are fed and nurtured and we have that, that hunger and our souls fulfilled. We can be that safe place for not for ourselves we can correct our own negative self-talk we can create we can be that safe place for our children and teach our children to, to go to the lord so they have that safe place just as we do and as we do that you what a beautiful cycle that is because they could that because he can turn all things to our good i love um in my scriptures in the bible dictionary we're under prayer it says that there are blessings that God is willing to grant, but are made conditional on our asking for them. Let me find it just quick. And it also talks about that many times we pray for things that are not in the, the that are not with the mind of Christ. They in no way represent his mind. And so in order for him, us to pray for the things that God is able to grant and willing to grant that are for our greatest good, then we can it says we pray in Christ's name when our mind is the mind of Christ and our wishes, the wishes of Christ, when his words abide in us, when we, we then ask for things it is possible for God to grant many prayers remain unanswered because they are not in Christ's name at all. They in no way represent his mind, but spring out of the selfishness of man's heart. So when we study the word of God, when we know Christ's words, when we are filled with those things and we become we have his safety in our hearts so that we are a safe place as well for ourselves and for others. Then we, and we are, his words abide in us. We can pray for others and for ourselves, blessings that God is able to grant. And we are strengthened as well as all the people around us. So my challenge to you is to 
just as just as Jacob, he went to Esau and he had to repair that relationship. Just go and and just take an evaluation of your relationships and where where is the most important place for you to start in repairing your relationships? Maybe it's somebody that has passed on and you just need to work on forgiving somebody. Maybe it's somebody, maybe it's your children or maybe it's your, your parents. Maybe it's a friend. Maybe it's somebody that's still living. Maybe it's your spouse. And whoever it is, just take a moment and say, okay, what relationship do I need to repair right now? And what relationship can I ask God for his help in repairing? And I am... <laughs> Okay, so I have the opportunity all the time to repair my relationship with my with my children and and with my ancestors and everyone. So May God bless you in all that you're working to do and heal. And just know, even if you don't believe it, you just take a minute and just allow the possibility that God, everything that's happening to you is for your greatest good and that Christ loves you and that he, he died and suffered just for you so that you can be healed. And I know that he is my savior and I know that he is yours. And I invite you to take some time to do this and make a commitment to yourself and, and at least energetically to that person that you will forgive or work on repairing or ask them for forgiveness. And I don't know if you ever heard of Ho'oponopono, but it is the practice of and different people say in different order, but uh, you, even if they're not in front of you, even if they're on the other side of the world or they've passed on, or you just don't feel comfortable talking to them, then you can energetically invite them in and you can talk to them, to their spirits. And you can say, I'm sorry, please forgive me. Thank you. I love you. Or sometimes you can say, you know, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I forgive you. Thank you. I love you. And so that is just, and sometimes I journal it and I journal, well, I journal my prayers so that I can keep my mind on track and I journal what I'm sorry for or what I'm forgiving or whatever the case is. And it's really just journaling a prayer and asking, inviting God to be in that, that Ho'oponopono practice. So that's my invitation to you and you have a wonderful week.